ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله بارك الله فيكم من الله تعالى Bless you all and honor you all in this life and the next. May Allah Ta'ala bless this community of Germantown and all the Salafi communities around the world. This topic is a very important topic. And we know it's important due to the numerous phone calls that come every day about marriage. And this issue, Ya Khwan, about marriage and divorce is causing a harm to our community. As the Muslim community is only made up of families. And when these families fall apart, they affect the ummah as a whole. So I ask you to give me 20 minutes. You know, I don't talk too long. 20 minutes, inshallah ta'ala. If, if, if the sisters can be quiet, please, you may hear something that may help out your marriage. The brothers, you may hear something with Allah's permission that may help out your marriage. Fa'akul bilay tawfiq. We begin by mentioning the hadith of Al-Miqdad Radra Anhu collected in Al-Tabarani Fil Mu'jam Al-Kabir that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said Inna Allah yusikum bin nisa khayra Inna Allah yusikum bin nisa khayra Fa inna hunna umuhatukum wa binatukum wa khalatukum He said indeed Allah he enjoins upon you, meaning he commands you to treat the woman kindly. Indeed, Allah commands you to treat the woman kindly. For indeed, they are your mothers and your daughters and your aunts. And he went on to say, indeed, in the rajman ahl al-kitab. Indeed, a man from the people of the book will marry a woman. And he can only put on her hand a string and neither one of them will desire to leave the other one until they die of old age. Sheikh Albani, he said, هذا إسناد صحيح متصل عندي فيتراجعه من شاء. He said, this hadith, is chain of narration, is authentic with me. It is connected. So whoever wants to research it, let them research it. This hadith, Ya Khwan, is concerning the Prophet ﷺ. He was advising his companions to be kind to the women. And he gave the example that indeed a man from the people of the book, meaning the Christians, and Sheikh Albani, he says, this is doing his time because the Christians today don't have the same etiquette. But during his time, a man from the people of the book would marry a woman and she would be so young and they would be so poor, all he could put on her finger wasn't a ring, it was a string. And despite this, Neither one of them would want to leave the other. They would be patient with each other. Be patient until they would die of old age. So why did he give him the example of the people from the book? Because if they can do it upon their bathil, then we should be able to do it with a haq. If they can get married at young age and be patient in poverty and not leave the other one until they die of old age, then how about the people of the haq? It's more befitting that we do it. Right? As another example I'll, I like to give about how the Christians, if they can do something, we can do it. My father, my father was, and my, my parents were born in the early 30s. They got married in the 50s. My father said, son, the first time I was alone with, with your mother is when I married her. Her father wouldn't let me be alone with her until I married her. They had this in them even without having Islam. So how about the Muslims? So I'm going to read something to you from Sheikh His, um, um, Hisham al Hausani. He is from the scholars of the UAE who Sheikh Ubaid al Jabri recommends that we take from him. Right? He has a book called Kabla and Tufakir fi Talaq, Before You Think About Divorce. And this book has nothing to do with the ahkam, the rules and regulations of divorce. He doesn't mention that. He's just trying to get us to think before you rush and divorce your wife. Before you rush and ask for a hula, think about some things. So I'm just going to read just a little bit from you, inshallah ta'ala. Sheikh, um, uh, um, 
Hisham al Hosani. The Shaykh, he mentions a narration from the great Sahaba Ibn Mas'ud, may Allah Ta'ala please him, that he said, Lawlam yabqa min ajli illa ashr ayyam. Ibn Mas'ud, he said, if there were only 10 days left in my life, wa alam anni amut fi akhiriha, yawman, and I knew that I was going to die after these 10 days, li fi hinna tawla nikah, and I had the ability to get married, I would, I would surely get married, being afraid of the fitna. Ibn Mas'ud, the great Sahaba, if I had 10 days left to live and I had the ability to get married, I would get married being afraid of falling into fitna. So the Sheikh, why does he mention this? And this, and this narration is um, collected by Sa'id Ibn Mansur. Why does he mention this? Because he, he said, my brother, before you divorce your wife, ask yourself this question. And we're going to mention a number of questions, right? I want the brothers to write this question down. Before you call the imam of the masjid and talk about you want a divorce, make sure you ask yourself these questions here. You'll save everybody a lot of time. He said, ask yourself, if you divorce your wife, are you able to remain without a wife? Are you going to stay single? If you're 40, 50, 60, anything under the age of 80 years old, are you going to be single for the rest of your life? You want to divorce your current wife, and you're going to do what? Brothers, a brother will literally say, brother, I'm divorcing my wife. We have a whole conversation, 15 minutes. In the conversation, brothers, any sisters available? Yeah, the one you're married to, she's available for you. <laughs> so the first question, before you divorce your wife, are you able to live without a wife? The next question, he said, then, Thuma in Canada, then if you have children between you and your wife and you divorce her, are you able to raise these children by yourself? Are you ready to go to the custody battle with the children? The next question, he said, then if you marry a new woman, you think she's going to raise your children? The next question, if you marry a new wife, are you going to be able to make a bond between her and your current children? Right? This is an assumption, right? You may think your kids are going to like your new wife. They may not like her because they feel some way about the way you, they think you did their mother. So you may not even be able to make a bond between your new wife and your children, right? He said, so now you are going to make some problems in the household with your children. And all of this should force you to think just a little bit before you take the affair of divorce. Before you divorce your wife, stop and think about all these questions here. Before you divorce your wife. Then he says, another affair. Are you going to find a woman better than the woman that you're complaining about? Are you going to find a wife better than the wife that you're complaining about today? He said, and for example, maybe you're complaining that she's not pretty enough. Maybe you're complaining she's not attractive enough. Maybe this is your main gripe. She doesn't look good enough for me. Although you saw her when you married her, are you, are you going to find, and, and, and this is a very important point, right? Because who is the one that will give you tawfiq to find a good wife? It's your Lord, Azawajal. So if you're not grateful for this current blessing of a wife, you just assume Allah Ta'ala is going to bless you with somebody better than her? Sheikh Huthimeen, what did he say? He said, all the favors are from Allah. And if you are grateful for those favors, he will increase you. And if you are not grateful for his favors, he will take them away from you. He said, and the greatest favor is Islam. And it's like every other favor. If you're grateful, he'll increase you. If you're not grateful, he'll take it away from you. Right? So he said, do you think you're going to find somebody better than her? And then listen to what the Sheikh says. He said, oh, my brother, 
Don't be deceived by what you see today on social media. Because we live in a time when things are not as they seem. He's speaking about a man may be married to a woman. And he goes on social media and finds a woman on Facebook or Tick Tap, whatever these people are using today. And he thinks a woman is more attractive than what he has now. He says, but now people are using filters. So the woman will get on, on the social media and she'll use a filter to make herself seem more attractive than what she is in real life. He says, so don't be deceived by that. Right? He says, but you are not pleased. He, he said, and another thing, he said, now you pay attention to this, brothers. Because he's speaking about brothers who are married to a wife. But they'll go on social media and find a woman who's posted on social media. She has a picture on social media for the whole dunya. May Allah ta'ala guide us and them. Now, you marry this wife who's doing something on social media that you don't let your current wife do. As for the wife you're married to right now, you want her to wear niqab and to be shy and have dignity. But you'll divorce her for a woman that you see on social media doing the opposite. You don't want your wife to interact with men, but you're going to go and marry a woman on social media that got 100 male friends on Facebook. And that's okay. But your current wife, she got to be shy and dignified. Right? He says, so ponder how Allah Ta'ala has honored you. He's honored you. Come from your Lord, Azrael, with a wife who's saliha. She's righteous. Tayyiba. She's wholesome. She's, she's chaste. Nam, he said, and indeed she is more noble and better and of a higher standard than the woman that you're trying to marry. He says, and perhaps she even looked better. He says, in reality, in reality, she's probably even more attractive. He says, but what happened? He said, but when you begin to do something haram, you begin to talk to these women on social media, shaitan beautifies these women for you. He says, Shaitan will beautify a woman for you, although she's really not that attractive. But he'll make her more attractive for you because you delved into that which was haram. He says, he will beautify that which is ugly. And he said, and it, as the saying goes, Kul everything that's prohibited, people want. You want what you can't have, right? He says, so how many people have we seen and they give way, they allow their intellect to submit to the whispers of shaitan and his games. And I'm going to tell you what the sheikh said. I'm just translating, right? The sheikh, he says, so they will exchange a pearl that Allah Ta'ala has honored them with and made halal for them for a piece of trash. He said they'll trade in a pearl that Allah Ta'ala has honored them with a pearl, a gem, and they'll trade it in for, for a piece of trash following their desire. The women, Shay, now, now he's going to talk to the women a little bit, right? He says, likewise for the women, have you thought about the statement of the Prophet? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ayyu imra'atan sa'alat zawjahat at-talaq min ghayri ma ba's fa haramun alayha rahatul jannah. Any woman who asks her husband for a divorce and there is no problem there, then the fragrance of paradise has been made haram for her. He says, so likewise, the woman, you have to reflect. He says, and think about this, right? Is there any house that's problem free when you're looking at the problems that are in your home? Are there any homes that don't have any problems whatsoever? He said, no, that's not the case. Are there any homes that the husband and wife don't have a misunderstanding between them? It's not the case, right? And as we mentioned to many of the people that we know the famous hadith. And to show how well known it is, I'm going to let you finish it. Inshallah ta'ala. Every day, shaitan, he has his stone upon the water. And he sends out his troops to cause fitna. And they come back, and this one says, I did so-and-so. He says, you did nothing. 
This one says, I did so-and-so. He says, you did nothing. Until the one comes back and said, I did. I'll call separation between the husband and wife. It says, anta, anta, or ni'ma anta. And if you, you're the one. You're the blessed one. It puts a crown on his head. So if you know that shaitan is every day trying to destroy the home, why can't you make an excuse for something your husband or wife says? That wasn't him. That was shaitan. That wasn't her. That was shaitan. If you know he's trying to destroy the home, why can't we make an excuse sometime, right? Now, he says, many of the women today, they say, my sister's husband, he's like this and like that. My friend's husband, he's like this and like that. They begin to brag about who their friends and relatives are married to, believing that they got the dream husband and they're stuck with who they stuck with, right? He says, making a comparison between your husband and your friends or relatives' husband is a big mistake. He says, well, Auntie Lad Tedri. He said, and you don't know. He said, maybe if you were married to that same man, he would have divorced you the first day. How do you know you would have got along with the other person's husband? How do you even know what's going on in their home? Many people, they post on social media, my husband did this and that for me, and they, be, they could be the most miserable people in the world. You don't know, right? He says, therefore, it's not proper or correct to compare your husband with the husband of another woman. He says, likewise, oh, my noble sister, are you able to live without a husband? Are you able to live without a husband? So if you get a divorce from your current husband, are you able to be single? It's tight out here. There's a man shortage out here. We know that, right? It's hard to find a, a man to the point that many of the sisters, may Allah Ta'ala honor us and them, they're willing to marry a man who's incarcerated, right? And I don't mean a man who's on house arrest. I mean a man who's incarcerated with life. They're willing to marry somebody who's never getting out of prison because they want companionship. So the woman has to be patient. It's a man shortage. If you have a man who's making salat, He's worshiping his Lord. He fears Allah Ta'ala. He's not harming you. You may want to be a bit patient with that, right? So the Sheikh, he says, so don't be deceived by all of your relatives or your friends who want to delve in your affairs and they want to rush you to get a divorce and leave the husband that Allah Ta'ala has honored you with. The Sheikh, he mentions the famous hadith of Al-Khalil, Al-Khalil Ibrahim alayhi salam. When he dropped off his wife and son in Mecca. What son was it? Ismail, right? And he left. Now the Sheikh says an important point that people don't understand is that he used to come back and visit him every month. He didn't just leave and he left at whose command? Allah Azza wa But he said he used to come back and visit him every month. Until one month he came back and his wife had passed away. And he came back and he was looking for his son, Ismail, and he found who? His wife, right? And he asked, how is your condition? And what did the wife say? Complain, we're poor, we don't have anything, right? And he said to him what? Change your doorstep, right? Now, the early mind, they say this word here, it is really is like the door handle. It's the thing, and the reason that the wife is called that is because that's the thing. The wife is who protects the home from anything getting inside the home. She's the one that protects the home. So the woman is meant to keep all the fitting outside the home by, one, not telling people all her business, right? So that's just a, a little fire that the chick mentioned, that he called her that because the wife protects the home from harm coming inside the home. Now, so the wife has to keep these people out of their home because the messenger of Allah is he said, Laysa minna min al-imra'a ala zawjiha. He is not from us, the, the person who turns the wife against her husband. This is from the major sin for a person to turn the wife against the husband, right? And the same applies to the men. There are men who will advise a woman to divorce her husband. And in most cases, it's a non-related man. And he's not the imam of the masjid, nor is he appointed to deal with marriages in the community. This is true fact. I've had brothers call me, and they say, Brother Rashid, there's a sister that's having problems with her husband, 
and, and he'll mention all the problems, and I'll say, okay, and who are you? Are you her brother? No. Father? No. Uncle? No. What relationship are you? Her, her friend. That's why she's having problems. You. Antemushkila. You're the problem. You're talking with this woman about her husband. SubhanAllah. Say, brother, I'm not talking to you about this. You shouldn't be talking to her, right? She couldn't call the Imam of the Masjid and talk to the Imam of the Masjid, but she can talk to you. Allah almost died, right? This is a problem, right? So, sisters, don't take advice from a strange man advise you about your husband. And we're going to see another big problem with this, inshallah ta'ala, right? Likewise, when you find sisters, you have to be careful when you take advice from other women about your marriage, right? This is something which you have to ask, right? If a woman, and women are smart, right? This is not about women being smart. We know women are smart, alhamdulillah. But there's something missing, right? If a sister, if a wife tells another sister about the problem she's having in her marriage, right? and she advises her. There's something missing from this. What's missing? She got half the story. She got half the story, right? There's a famous hadith from Abi Sa'id. He said, Ja'at imra'a ila Rasulillah, A woman came to the Prophet, والسلام, and he said, and we were with him. And she said, Zawji Safwan ibn Mu'attal. And Safwan ibn Mu'attal, he's also famous because He's the one who, when our mother Aisha, may Allah ta'ala be pleased with her, um, fell asleep and lagged behind on the expedition, he, digni in a dignified manner, escorted her until she caught up with the companions. But anyway, his wife came to the Prophet Islam and said, my husband, Sufwan ibn Ma'atal, he beats me when I pray. He makes me break my fast when I fast. And he doesn't pray fajr prayer until the sunrise. And the Prophet Islam, and they said, and and Safwan was with them. So he asked him about what she said. And that's the shahid. He asked him about what she He didn't just say, okay, well, she said you did this, therefore, this is my ruling. He asked him about what she said. So how many people, Yahuan, they only talk to the wife. The wife says, my husband does this to me. And they say, okay, sister, you should get a khula. Leave him. And they never talk to the brother. You don't understand how effective it is to get both spouses together. And not just talk to them separately. No, I want to talk to you guys and make you talk. And we're all going to be on the phone together. So you can hear what she's saying and she can hear what you're saying. Because it sounds different. When you have to complain about your wife, you know she listened to you. Okay, it's going to sound a little different now. You have to talk about your husband knowing he's listening. Okay, yeah, it didn't really happen like that. The story begins to change. So get both parties together. Let's both get on the phone. Alhamdulillah, we can do three-way on phone very easy. And mention your complaints while your spouse is listening. But to give advice when you only heard half the story, that's very dangerous. But that happens all the time. People advise women to get khula, and they never spoke to the husband. Don't know the man. Very dangerous, right? Nah. The second point, the sheikh says, if you have children together, there is no doubt that your children will be affected by the divorce. He said, and many of our children are lost due to their parents divorcing except those whom Allah Ta'ala protects. Now, I'm just going to mention this last little point here, Yahuwah, that I want everyone to think about, right? Before you think about getting divorced, because we've already agreed upon Everybody in here is too young to be without a wife. We all agree? Okay. So, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question, right? The one thing, there's one thing that you're going to have in common with your current wife and your new wife. There's one thing that you can guarantee you're going to have in common in this marriage and your new marriage. What's that? Hmm? You. You. You're going to be the common denominator. You. 
right? So this is the question, right? Are you, whenever, look, think about it, right? Most of us here are married, right? My lot to Isla preserve us in our marriage, right? Our wives are going to tell us what they don't like about us. Am I lying? Our wives are going to tell us, even something small. You know, brother, I don't like that you do this or that, right? So we know the problems in our marriage. And if you have counseling, your wives are going to tell us. And likewise, the husband is going to tell the wife what he doesn't like about her. So this is the question, right? Are we willing to change what our spouses complain about to save our marriages, to keep our kids in the house? Are you willing to change? Your wife says, sweetheart, you work too much and you don't spend enough time with me. Are you willing to change that to keep your current marriage or not? Are you willing to change that, right? And if you're not going to change, that means that are you willing to marry a new wife and keep those same flaws? Or are you going to change those flaws for the new wife, but I'm not going to change them to keep my current wife and kids in the house together? I'm not going to change them for the wife I've been married to for 20 years, but for a brand new sister, I'm going to change. I'm going to do everything right. Is that the case? Or is it more likely that people say, well, that's how I am. I'm not going to change. You understand the question? When your spouse comes to you and you're about to get divorced for whatever reason, are you willing to change these flaws to keep your current house intact? Or are you going to take these same flaws into the new marriage? If you say, you know what, I'm not going to change for my current wife, and I'm going to keep these same flaws for my new wife. The next question is, will you at least tell the new wife about the flaws? Because the Prophet said, whoever deceives us is not from us. So you can't go into a marriage, you know, if you have some type of flaw that's going to affect the marriage, be honest about it. So for example, if your current wife complain that you are mean to her, and this is the reason that you're getting the, the divorce, although kindness to the wife is what? It's a right that she has upon you. It's a right. It's not optional. It's not just good. Right? And treat the and live with the woman in kindness. So in Nisai verse 19, right? And the Prophet said, Allah alaykum and ilayhinna. And indeed, their right upon you is that you are kind to them. So you know it's a right, but if you're still mean to your current wife and you divorce her to get somebody brand new, are you going to at least tell the new sister, look, I'm mean to women. I don't like to be nice to women. You still want to marry me? Just be honest, right? Just be honest, right? Now, some men, unfortunately, if you look at, you know, there are, there are lists of complaints that women make and lists of complaints that men make. They're always the same complaints, right? And some of the women, they complain, they say, my husband is mean to me, but he's nice to who? Non-related women. The strange woman, oh, that's, that's Dawa. I think I'd be nice to this Dawa, right? He's nice to the strange woman, the non-Muslim woman, but he's mean to his Muslim wife, right? Right? So if you're a man that likes to insult your wife, you like to call her, she gave birth to four or five children, but you call her fat, like you don't know pregnancy makes you gain weight. And you don't want to take a walk in, but you complain about her weight. Just be, look, tell your new wife, look, now if you gain some weight, I'm going to call you fat. Just tell her that. Be honest. Because you didn't change for your current wife, so just be honest with the new wife. Tell her who you are. Right? If you don't, a, a, another complaint that the women have is that men don't spend time with them. Right? Some men, they like to spend time. They have a little cubby hole. They spend all the time in their office. They spend all the time on WhatsApp, little groups, spreading by the benefits of marriage. <laughs> Don't spend time with his wife. That's a big complaint of the woman, right? So if you're not willing to change, because the Prophet, he would spend time with his wives. Say so he would gather all of his wives together sometime, and they would go eat and have dinner together. Sheikh what they mean, he says, one of the things that will destroy your family is not sitting down and have lunch and dinner with your family. He said, if you don't have dinner and lunch with your children, you're going to make a wedge between you and your children, and when they get older, they're not going to want to be around you. Right? Right? And the Prophet, Islam, after Isha, he would sit and have a conversation with his wives, right? 
He would play games and race. Which wife did he race? Aisha. He would race the wives. He would, have, he would joke and play with his wives, right? But if you're not like that, say, sister, I don't like to spend time with women. Just tell her that up front, right? And let her make a decision if she wants to marry you or not, right? Now, nah. likewise for the sisters. One of the main complaints that men have about some of our women, men have a lot of other guidance than them, is what? Is the sharp tongue. The sharp tongue. Sisters, that's one of the main complaints. The sharp tongue, right? The sharp tongue. So I ask my sisters, may Allah Ta'ala bless you. Ask yourself this question, sisters. How does your husband know when you're upset? How does your husband know when you're upset? Our mother Aisha, may Allah Ta'ala please her. The Prophet Islam, he said, I know when you're upset with me and when you're pleased with me. He said, because when you are upset with me, you say, Kalla wa Rabbi Ibrahim. You say, no, I swear by the Lord of Ibrahim. And when you're happy with me, you say, Kalla wa Rabbi Muhammad. No, I swear by the Lord of Muhammad. She said, you have spoken the truth, O Messenger of Allah. I only boycott your name. How does your husband know when you're upset? Do you break things? Do you use four and five or six letter words? Do you leave the house? How does he know? Ask yourself that question. How does your husband know when you're upset with him? The Prophet Muhammad Islam knew because she would boycott his name. That's it, not boycott the bed, right? Likewise, unfortunately, as, as, as the saying goes, hurt people hurt people. Some of our women have been hurt many times by us. So their tongue becomes kind of sharp to the point that they begin to pride themselves in having a sharp tongue. Or oh, I'll tell somebody off in a minute. This is a bad quality. Let me tell you why. There's a narration when they said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, inna fulana tukumu layl wa tusumu nahar wa taf'al kadha wa kadha wa tusaddaq. They say, so and so, this woman, she prays all night. She fasts during the day. She gives charity. But she harms her neighbor with the tongue. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا خير فيها هي من أهل النار. Says, there's no good in her. She's from the inhabitants of the hellfire. Why? Because of that tongue. And they said, there's another woman. She only prays her five daily prayers. She gives a little bit of cottage cheese as sadaqah, meaning something small. But she doesn't harm anybody with her tongue. هي من أهل الجنة. She's in the paradise. So that tongue, akhawat, it can harm you. Don't harm yourself with your tongue. So if you're getting a divorce from your current husband because you have a sharp tongue, are you willing to change your tongue to save your family? If you're not, are you going to tell the new husband? Now, if I get upset with you, I'm going to call you some things. I'm going to use some... Prof are you going to tell your new husband that you have a sharp tongue? Or are you going to change for your current husband? Now, we're going to end with this right here, right? Because some of the women, they use a narration to justify having a harsh tongue. Does anyone know what narration this is? Uh, is this a narration or No, but it's Zach O'Kai, may Allah bless you. Hmm? Omar. Omar al Men call it Enter. Zach O'Kai, Dawood. This is the narration, right? Maybe you've heard it before, right? It was mentioned, and this is how the narration comes in Arabic. It was mentioned, it was mentioned, that a man came to Umar al-Khattab to complain about the character of his wife. And as he stood in the door waiting for Umar, he heard the wife of Umar scolding Umar, and he was silent and did not respond. Then the man turned away and left while saying, if this is the condition of Umar, the leader of the believers, then how about my condition? Some women use this as justification to fuss at their husband, right? Now, why is this not correct? I called Sheikh Mohammed al in the UAE, may Allah Ta'ala preserve him, and asked about this narration. He said, this narration is weak. And we know that in order for a narration to be authentic, it has to have a chain that's connected, right? That's free of a 
shies any uh, contradiction and free from a defect. What's wrong with this one? This doesn't have a chain at all. This is called tamrid. This hadith doesn't even have a chain. It's not that the chain is weak. It's not that somebody, there's a man in the chain that's weak. There is no chain at all, right? This hadith, when it says, this hadith is called tamrid, that when it says it was mentioned, nobody said it, it was mentioned. Like I heard through the grapevine, right? To give a bad English translation, right? Nah. So when you have, when it's ambiguous in the grammatical passive voice, it was mentioned or it was narrated. This hadith, Imam Anoui and Imam Abani said this hadith is weak, right? So you cannot work by this hadith that is weak. That's number one. Second of all, do you know Umar al Khattab? Do you know who he was? The status that he had negates anyone talking to him like that, right? The women, men, and even Shaitan were afraid of him. So the thought that his wife would scream upon him to the point that people outside the home could hear that, that's unimaginable, right? The Prophet, he said, oh, Umar, indeed, Shaitan is afraid of you. Hadith collected in Turmudi, right? Another narration that was explained by Shaykh Rabi that he said that, oh, Umar, when Shaitan sees you walking down the street, he takes another street. Sheikh Rabi, he said, it means that when Iblis sees Umar walking down the street, he will take another street that an army could walk through. He's so far from Umar that a whole army could walk between him and Umar because he's afraid of him. Right? The men were afraid of Umar. Ibn Abbas was the cousin of who? The Prophet, right? Allah please him. He said, I waited for an entire year to ask Umar a question about a verse in the Quran, but I could not ask him due to the reverence I had for him. It took him a year to ask Umar a question, right? Umar ibn Maymun, he said, I prayed with Umar on the day he was stabbed, and nothing prevented me from praying in the first row except that I was afraid of him. He was a frightening man. He didn't pray in the front row because he was afraid to be close to Umar. Even the women, it's mentioned that, um, that the Prophet Islam, he went out on a battle, and when he came back, there was a young black girl who said to him, she was a, a small little girl. She said to him, I made a vow with Allah Ta'ala that if he returned you back safely, I would beat the duff. And the Prophet Islam, he said to her, if you have taken an oath, then beat it. And if you didn't take the oath, then don't beat it. So she started to beat the duff, right? Abu Bakr entered. She kept beating the duff. Ali entered. She kept beating the duff. Uthman entered. She kept beating the duff. Umar entered, she took the duff and sat on it. She was scared of Umar, right? So do you think that somebody who everybody was afraid of, and don't, don't get it wrong, Umar was nice. Don't get it wrong, men, and now you, you know, Umar was not mean, but Allah just gave him that thing that made people afraid of him. But he was still very nice and kind and dignified, right? But the point is that the people were afraid of him, so don't think his wife would scream upon him like that. And also, if you say that, you're making an insult upon this noble woman, his wife. His wife was Umm Kurtum. This is the wife they're talking about, right? And she was the daughter of Ali and Fatima. This is who he married, right? This woman was too dignified to do that. If that's something that you have a problem with, ask Allah Ta'ala to cure you of that. But don't put that on her, right? That's not something that she would do. Because as Sheikh Wati Min, he says, the woman yelling at her husband is bad adab, is bad manners. And lastly... Sister, so if you are getting a divorce because you believe there should be two leaders in the home, this is another complaint that men have, that some of the women, they want the man to pay the rent, pay all the bills. But when it comes to being the leader, it's going to be me and you. When it comes to be the bills, it's going to be you. Leader, me and you. If the child comes and asks us something and you say something, I may cut you off. Uh, I got it, brother. And just tell the child what to do. But when the landlord call, pass husband the phone, right? And let not some of you desire what Allah Ta'ala has preferred others with, right? Surah Nisa, right? So if you're not willing to change for your current husband, are you going to tell the new husband, now we get married, I'm going to call the shots with you? 
Nobody's going to go for that. So the shot here, the point here is to let's try to change ourselves for our current marriage. Let's not just always think that some people are in love with the idea of marrying somebody brand new. It's not good. We're destroying our community, Jaquan. The wife that you have, the husband that you have, look at the good in that person and see if we can fix that. And let's not be so quick to rush and try to get something new. May Allah Ta'ala preserve our marriages. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Muhammad.